Hello, everyone, and welcome into the Coach Everett Withers Show as we chat James Madison University Dukes football with their head coach, Everett Withers. I'm your host, Kurt Dudley. Well, for the 11th time in the program's history, the Dukes are NCAA tournament bound in the football championship subdivision. The Dukes this past Saturday wrapped up the regular season, a seven-game winning streak, and handed a 59-27 to loss to the Phoenix of Elon here at Bridge Four Stadium. So, Coach, first of all, mission one is accomplished. 9-3 uh, and three during the regular season. You yeah. get into the postseason. Now the chance to just go out and win another ball game. Well, that was, you know, the objective was to uh, play this year, not knowing how many games we'd win. But uh, if we got into the postseason, I, the, the ability to be able to go play one more game uh, and, and for it to be meaningful each week. Uh, if you won a game, you got to play another one. So it also gave us an extra time, uh, gives us extra time to, to practice some of the young guys. So that was important for us. And in the first year of uh, trying to establish a culture, I think that's important for your program. All the players gathered here in the uh, club room at Bridge Four yeah. Stadium, and of course the coaching staff, administrators. It was the first time you'd gone through the selection show process right. at the FCS level. What was it like for you personally, and for the and for the staff? Well, I think it was fun. I think it was a lot of uh, a lot of excitement for for us. You know, obviously not having gone through it before. Uh, I think our staff, some of our staff, had been other places that may have done that. But uh, I, I, you know, it was really fun for us to have uh, you know close people, uh, the administration, close people to the program here, uh, and, and our players uh, be be involved in having that selection uh, show uh, uh, experience. Yeah, some of the alpha dogs were right. here too as well. Right. I know they certainly did enjoy it. The game plan. Let's go to Elon. Uh, this this game that you just played this mm -hmm. past Saturday. The game plan was to get the running game back on track. Right. Well, that first drive uh, you run 82 yards uh, 60 yeah. of it was on the ground right you established the running game very early on Saturday well that was kind of the mission this week we feel like going into the postseason we've got to be effective running the football so we wanted to use this game uh, as a means to try to do that knowing that we were going to get you know what we've seen the last three or four weeks is really uh, people trying to outnumber us in the run and uh, but we still wanted to stick with it and, and see if we can hammer the run out. Juwan Latney obviously had a great day in the first half. He had a hundred yards in the first half and then Khalid Abdul had a uh, uh, 92 yards uh, you know to finish the game with so uh, for us to go over 200 plus yards in, in the run game was big for us this week. Yeah nearly the, the two backs were nearly 200 yards. Uh, curious though in the in the first half Juwan was the workhorse in that yeah. first half. He had a hundred yards but yet uh, Abdullah gets into the end zone three times yeah. and I know that you want to reward players and sure. of course the fans might think well why don't they give it to Latney let him go ahead and score the <laughs> six but what when you do that strategically why the change in the personnel late in a drive like that well you know Juwan's kind of our, our, our hammer guy he's kind of the guy that we want to run early and and try to you know establish the run game with and uh, and, and Khaled has done a great job of coming in and being a little bit of a change of pace back for us uh, he, he's a strong inside runner but he's got a little bit more slash to him. So to be able to use those guys in a complimentary uh, fashion, you know, we feel like works well for us. Uh, Juwan kind of, you know, we, we kind of figure out the run game with Juwan. Right. And then when, when Khalid gets in the game, we usually have an idea, and he usually can, can break off some explosive runs. Well, plus the defense a little denser there at the goal sure. line, too, so sure. to, to be able to take it to the outside. A remarkable performance by one junior quarterback, yeah. Bad Lee. Yeah. 23 for 25 passing. Nobody, had, nobody in JMU football history has had that right. uh, great of an accuracy of a game. Let me ask you this. Did the effect of the rushing game, since you did dominate the rushing game, did yeah. that open things up so that it was even that much more easier for VAD to be efficient? I, I think so. I, and I think what VAD did, I think he threw to uh, 11 different guys. Yes. So uh, uh, it, it gave him the opportunity because they were either rushing four and not rushing because they were stopping the run, or they were dropping eight and only rushing three. Uh, which gave him time for routes to come open. And, and uh, when you sell out to stop the run or you sell out to stop the pass, uh, I still think either one, if you've got good route concepts, guys can get open. And Bad was, uh, you know, nearly perfect, you know, finding guys in the open field uh, on Saturday. He finished with 257 yeah. yards. It wasn't his greatest distance as far as passing sure. yards concerned. But three more touchdowns, that gives him 29 on the season. Right. You mentioned a couple of weeks ago. Facing JMU, you got to pick your poison. Well, I think on Saturday you showed that the poison's about as equal, running or throwing. 
Well, that was our objective is to try to be balanced. If we're balanced, we feel like we got a chance to be successful. Uh, that means we're, we're running it well, in which we think will we'll open up the passing lanes for us. So uh, we've had to win some games here late uh, throwing the football because we haven't been able to run the ball. And that, that becomes hard. Uh, so, uh, you know, our objective, again, is to be balanced. And uh, we feel like once, we, once we're balanced, we feel like we're on track offensively. Early in the season, the offense was uh, struggling at getting off to quick starts, but yeah. that's changed since the Charlotte game for the most part right this past weekend uh, after back-to-back -back shutouts in the second half the defense got off to a very quick start as defense can do well I, I think our guys are getting better I think they're they're growing uh, in a lot of ways they're growing growing in conception of knowing knowing what's important in the defense and knowing why we do things in the defense and to me that's taken a long time it's taken a process for this year but you wanted and, uh, to be you but, knew but you were we knew, be patient. Yeah, exactly yeah. we wanted to be patient with them and we knew they were going to be growing patient with a young group and we just feel like that they're getting better and better guys like you know Taylor Reynolds is getting better uh, uh, Kyrie Hawkins is getting better Simeon Robinson guys like that that even though Simeon didn't play this past week he's you know getting better each week so uh, everybody talks about Sage Harrell and Brandon Lee who are really two really good players for us but we've got some young guys that are really getting better and, and uh, we're looking forward to the future with some of those guys. It was a senior day and it was good to see one of your leading seniors because he's gone through some adversity yeah. this year, uh, warranted or not, uh, right. Dean Marlowe to come up with a couple of interceptions, but you were a little hard on him, I think, on his first <laughs> one. Well, he intercepted the ball and uh, he was running down the sideline and he got tackled there on the boundary and I really felt like, you know, uh, you know, really talented guy, which he is, uh, would, would, would have scored on that one. And so I, you know, the first thing I said to him was, like, how did you get tackled over here about the, on the sideline? And uh, he laughed. And uh, so we kind of had a little, little chuckle there about uh, his answer. I'm just glad he was able, he's able to get uh, two interceptions in the last regular season game for him. Looking for consistency offensively, defensively, special teams, the kicking game, the yep. kicking game against Richmond, you were commenting about you felt that that was a good improvement. Yes. Let's go back to this past Saturday. Kicking yep. game again, consistency showing up a little bit there? I think so. We did a great job, I felt, on kickoff coverage this past week. Uh, uh, you know, we always uh, judge uh, kickoff coverage is, is a tone setter, and we felt like it was a tone setter for our defense early. Uh, and then as the game went on and we got to kick off more, you know, when you see returners two yards deep and they don't bring it out, you know you're doing good on kickoff because usually when a guy's two yards deep, he's bringing it out, and, and, and the airline guy kept kneeling about two yards deep in the end zone. So that, that says a lot for your kickoff coverage. Uh, obviously, we blocked the punt. Uh, we felt like against Elon's punt formations and what they were doing, we didn't want to try to set up returns and, and have the, 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 the rugby kick hit us. So our whole scheme uh, for the week was either be safe and make sure they didn't fake it or go after it. And we, act, you know, obviously we got a punt block this yeah, week. Yeah, some guy named Jimmy Morgan yeah. <laughs> comes up with another uh, block kick. Yeah. He was named the rookie of the week. And right. by the way, Vad Lead was also the offensive yeah. player of the week. His third of the season all here during the second half of the campaign. It was senior day, as I mentioned earlier. How do you think your seniors and the rest of the team handled it? I, I thought they did a really good job. You know, we, I, I really put the challenge to our seniors and our and our underclassmen this week. I said, seniors, it's your job to make sure that the underclassmen are focused and ready to play this game because this is your your last regular season game. And I, and I challenge our underclassmen to play, you know, four to six A to B with fanatical effort and focus for those seniors going out in their last uh, regular season game in, in Bridgeport. So uh, with the two, I felt like each guy, each group did their job uh, and, and allowed us to go win a, win a game. So the Dukes are going to the playoffs. Right. Playoffs FCS versus the bowl you've been you will go to both now your thoughts right. on that well, uh, it, you know, the bowl's a little bit different. You know, you got, you got that period of time in between before you play one game, uh, which is a little different uh, than, than the playoff system. Uh, I, you know, this right here kind of keeps you in rhythm, I think. I think the, the FCS uh, playoff system uh, with 24 teams and you playing each week really does a good job of, of keeping you uh, kind of focused each week. And, and, and we're like the NFL where you have to go prepare for a different opponent each week. And there's more positives to going to the postseason in the recruiting world than there yeah. would be otherwise. No question. Uh, uh, you know, when you're recruiting kids, it's really good 
to be able to have uh, uh, kids to, uh, watch you play, uh, watch you continue to play while somebody else that may be recruiting them is not playing. And, uh, you know, you get to talk about positives of playing extra games and, and why you're playing extra games. And that means usually you got a winning record. And, and uh, uh, all those things are pluses in the recruiting world. You have genuine things to talk about. You're no not question. making things up. No question. You know, it, no doubt about it. It says it all right there. It says there. it all. That's you're right. in the postseason. So the Dukes, they do finish the regular season 9-3. and three, And for the fifth time as a Division One program, they get nine regular season triumphs. So the Dukes will face the Flames of Liberty this Saturday at 4. We'll talk later in the show about well, the Flames of Liberty just down the road a piece, two hours in Lynchburg. But first, we're going to take a time out here on the Everett Withers Show. Office products, we buy right so you can do. That's right. At Office Products, we do things right. With our multi-million dollar inventory of new, used, and refurbished furniture, you're sure to find exactly what you're looking for. From desks to chairs, filing cabinets, and so much more. All the major brands that you're looking for. Office products, we buy right so you can too. Office products, we do things right. Hey, did you know Harrisonburg Nissan has the best selection of pre-owned cars in the Valley? With something for everyone. Best selection, locally owned, number one volume dealer, it all adds up. Check it out at HarrisonburgNissan.com. Clear to zip. Break a little. That's good. Very good job. Game on. Welcome back, everyone, to the postseason Everett Withers Show as uh, we continue to talk James Madison football. We're going to go back and pull a couple of, well, chalk talk files off the shelf and go deep into JMU football. The second play that I want to show is a critical third and eight in the fourth quarter. Um, we had scored and we had cut the lead uh, to one possession. We had kicked a field goal and cut it to one possession, and we really needed to get a stop. And so this was a critical third down. We're in our Dime Rabbits package. Um, so we've got six defensive backs in the game uh, with really our, our three best defensive line pass rushers. And then Rakeem Stallings is playing the Dime Rabbits jack position. Um, you'll see Kyrie Hawkins up here at the top. He's the other linebacker. So we have six defensive backs, two linebackers, and three defensive linemen in the game. And we're bringing another um, odd fire zone uh, to the tight end. Um, and what you'll see is we tried to time it up off the snap indicator. We really wanted to get Dean Marlowe activated in the blitz game. You'll see Dean and Rakeem uh, kind of cadence themselves outside to the tight end. And then we're going to be playing, again, middle of the field fire zone where we've got a middle of the field safety. And then we're basically playing man-to-man -man with the underneath coverage. You'll see Jimmy Moreland, Marquise Woodyard, and Aaron Peake playing man-to-man -man on their guys. Kyrie Hawkins, you'll see, is a big factor in this blitz because he adds what we call an ad blitz off the running back here and uh, is a big factor in the blitz. Again, really tight coverage up there at the top with Taylor Reynolds um, all over his man. Uh, Aaron does a nice job of playing top down on the tight end and then Marquise is tightly uh, guarded on, on McBride in the slot. We kind of collapse the pocket. You'll see it from the tight shot. We collapse the pocket, and Sage is able to get the sack here. Uh, Sage Harold, number three here. This was one of his three sacks. But the reason why this happened, Brandon Lee's got a big-time rush here to the left, forces the guy to step up, and that allows Sage to get the secondary sack there, which was one of six in the game for us. Thanks again, everybody, for all your support. Go Dukes. In, the, in our first game against Maryland, they had been uh, a lot of internal pressure okay, to stop our inside run game. So we felt like in this game, too, if they were going to continue the same type of game plan to stop our inside zone game, we needed to try and figure a way to, to get out on the perimeter. So we're going to run what we call, uh, what most people call a, a man sweep play. And all we're going to do okay, is block the end right here with the tight end. Okay, block down right here on this, uh, if it's a nose guard right here, okay, and get two pullers around the edge. Get two pullers around the edge. 
My slot receiver is going to read the leverage of uh, this uh, alley defender. If he buzzes outside of him, he's going to block him. If he stays inside of him, he's going to climb to the safety. Okay, and this we're just all we're going to do is block here and leave two for this guy, and then whoever is left right here and get to the edge. Same, similar idea, similar idea, of pin and pull scheme. Now we see bring internal pressure right here, a run blitz. Okay, to try and stop the inside zone game. Okay, which uh, is exactly what you want. Okay, because you're going to leave everybody backside and it's going to get wadded up in the back, so we get people out. Uh, out on the edge and if you look at this picture right here we're all hatted up on the front side with still a puller to go still a puller to go Matt Williams is gonna come and just clean up any trash hanging off her shard right there and springs this play open and you watch our guys up front man they're doing an incredible job they're doing incredible. watch Austin Lane right here creating an edge watch Nick Appel right there boom creating an edge that allows our tight end to climb up Right, we get the ball in the, uh, the deep safety and let our running back do work in space. This is a great job by our boys up front. Great job on the perimeter. Right, as this guy disappears down inside, okay, Nick Appel is going to pin him inside. It's going to allow Dean Cheatham to climb. Okay, Austin Lane's going to block down, and our center is going to pull. Our center is pulling for this guy. He's pulling for the, the Mike linebacker right here, but as he disappears into the blitz, he get, we gain a hat outside. Okay, because our running back is going to outrun, outrun the internal pressure right there. Okay, they do a great job up front. Okay, Matt Williams, you're going to see him clean up color right there. Anything hanging out of the hole. Okay, and allow Khalid Abdullah to get into space right there. Watch the effort out here by Dean Cheatham. Nice job right here. You see our guys trying to run and block downfield. That's a great job by our guys on the perimeter as well. Thank you very much there, fellas. Well, but earlier in the show, we were talking, of course, to the coach Everett Withers. He'll join us again a little later to talk about the Flames of Liberty. He was chatting about the number of receivers that Badley is finding down the field, including 11 this past week in the victory over Elon. Well, the uh, young man that's in charge of coaching that group is Parker Fleming. Well, my coaching career started really when I was a player. Got a lot of opportunities with uh, the coaching staff at Presbyterian College to help mentor the guys above me, really, in, in, in the, the depth chart at quarterback. From there, I went to Capital University in Columbus, Ohio, a Division III program, where I was a quarterback's coach there and the JV offensive coordinator. Uh, after that, I went to Ohio State, where I was a graduate assistant working with the wide receivers and the special teams there for two years. Uh, after that, then I came here back in January and started off my uh, career here at JMU. Well, Coach Withers, he asked, um, you know, would I be interested in coming here to Harrisonburg? And, I remember, like I said, I played at Presbyterian College and James Madison was one of the best 1AA programs around. So I obviously knew about it. I didn't know a lot of details because we played Liberty and we played VMI. They were both in the, in the Big South, but we never came up to Harrisonburg. So I knew about the area and I knew about the, the football in this area was really good. Uh, after doing a little more research, I you know, realized what this place was, kind of a, a gem here in the CAA, and I was really, really excited to get to be a part of the program down here. The team really, as you, as you see, has, has started to catch stride. You know, we, we've really preached the same stuff over and over and over, and if you sat in any of our meetings, staff meetings, team meetings, special teams meetings, offensive or even my wide receiver meetings, you'd notice that we have a lot of the same themes that we say over and over and over again, and some of the players say, why do you say the same thing every day, every week? And, and it's starting to really catch catch a hold and that's when you realize it's it's good that guys kind of expect the routine and the rhythm of how we do things. And Telos wants to give you more for the holidays, like two gigs of data and unlimited talk and text for just $25 a month. That's a better value than Verizon and AT&T. And nothing says happy holidays like getting the smartphone you want for zero down. And Telos will even buy out your contract. It's $25, two gigs of data and unlimited talk and text. Happier holidays from Intellos. More phones, more lines, more data. Get more for the holidays from Intellos.
at Harrisonburg Nissan. Right now, you can get 0% financing on select models. Hey, keep your money. Use Nissan's. We'll honor and beat all buying service prices. We want your business. Check it out at HarrisonburgNissan.com. Office products, we buy right so you can do. That's right. At Office Products, we do things right. With our multi-million dollar inventory of new, used, and refurbished furniture, you're sure to find exactly what you're looking for. From desks to chairs, filing cabinets, and so much more. All the major brands that you're looking for. Office Products, we buy right so you can too. Office Products, we do things right. Clear to zip. <laughs> Break a little. That's good. Very good job. Game on. Come closer. Yeah. That's it. If you buy now at Harrisonburg Nissan, you won't have to make a payment till 2015. But don't tell anyone. If the word got out, everyone will be buying there. Check it out. HarrisonburgNissan.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the postseason Everett Withers Show as we continue to chat about JMU football. We're now going to talk about JMU athletics in general and invite in the Duke's athletics director, Jeff Bourne, who was a very, well, happy guy on Sunday when it was announced that the Dukes would have a home game this Saturday. We're going to chat a little bit about, well, the state of the NCAA and how it pertains to James Madison. Probably the most difficult days I've had in the 15 years here were the sport cuts in 06. That, um, that, that takes years off your life, and it, it's a very difficult thing to go through. Um, Decision-wise, we're on the other side of it. Uh, I think the right decision was made, and we're, we're, we're moving in the direction we need to be. Uh, the conference issue is trying, because those are issues that, as a director or an institution, you don't have direct control over any of that. You can work and you can try to influence and you can do all the things as an institution that you possibly can. But those decisions are driven by a lot of different factors. They're driven, driven by economic factors in some case. They're driven by other conferences. They're driven by syndication rights and all these factors that uh, we'd love to think that we control, but we don't. So the question is how do we navigate through that and put the institution in the best position we can be long term. Our biggest challenge is sitting right now in, in 2014 saying strategically based on the national climate of everything that's happening in the NCA. And even though we had obviously ideas that this would eventually happen 15 years ago, it's accelerated through and it's at the doorstep now. And there's going to be a tremendous amount of change told the staff a month ago, we'll probably see more change in the next five years than the, than the collegiate world has seen in the past 40 or 50. Monumental change, and what does that mean? How do you as an institution, how do I as an athletic director anticipate and navigate through that so that I'm able to give good information to our board, to our president, to our administration, to make sure that we're going where we need to be as an institution? And to say that that's not challenging, it is. It's extremely challenging because there's a lot there that we can do, but there's also a lot that's being dictated uh, at the highest level. So, you know, it's going to be interesting in these next couple of years to see how this impact and this change, this division of conferences, how that affects uh, JMU and other institutions at our level, uh, both in our conference and outside our conference regionally and nationally before it's over and done with. And then how do we take advantage of opportunity? Because one of the things I do believe is that in every circumstance like this, there's always opportunities to be taken. And that's what we're looking for. That good opportunity, that time for us to be able to do those things that makes our program, our coaches, our staff, our alumni, our donors feel good about where we are and what we're doing.
Welcome back, everyone, to the Coach Everett Withers Show. The Dukes in the postseason, FCS playoffs. They do get an opening round game. It will be at home against the Flames of Liberty University, two programs that have met 17 times in the past, never in the postseason because this, in fact, is Liberty's first yeah. trip to the postseason at the Division I level. Uh, Turner Gill is their head coach. Right. Uh, he was playing quarterback when I was in high school, uh, was, right. when I was in college, actually, right. uh, as he was at uh, Nebraska, a, a finalist for the Heisman Trophy. Three times he's been a head coach. Uh, your, your knowledge of Turner, Turner and his career? Well, he, uh, Turner's had a, a, an excellent career and uh, done a good job wherever he's been. I know he had a tough uh, run there at Kansas, but uh, I think that had a lot to do with personnel and recruiting and that, those type things that, that usually uh, hamstring you. You know, hamstring a coach sometimes. Uh, he, he's done a good job at Liberty. Going in his third year, he uh, I think he's built this thing up uh, like he wanted to. Uh, and they're a physical football team. They want to run the football. They want to play really good defense. I know a number of guys on their staff, and they're excellent football coaches. So we're going to have our hands cut out for us uh, uh, playing them this week. What, what type, what is style? You say yeah. physical, but what, what's the style that Turner Gill brings to the Liberty program? Well, I, I think, uh, you know, a two-back run game, also a little bit like ours, some of the zone read run game. But uh, they, they want to run the ball, and they want to be downhill, run powers, run sweeps. Uh, you know, they're going to use the quarterback in the run game a lot. Uh, they're going to throw pass off the play action. Uh, and then they're going to be aggressive on defense. So uh, I think that's the mindset that they want to have uh, in, in their program and what they built uh, uh, in their culture. DJ Abner is their leading ball carrier, 95 yards per game. But you also mentioned Josh Woodrum can rush the ball as well. And what stands out to me, Coach, only 81 yards in loss yardage this right. year, which means that as a quarterback, he's either getting rid of the football yep. or he's moving it in a positive direction. Well, he is. He, he's very elusive in the pocket. Uh, and like I said, he can run the football, and they will scheme runs for him. Uh, he's not taking a lot of sacks because he's, uh, you know, he's very elusive back there. So we've got to do a great job when we've rushed the passer, making sure we're in the right uh, uh, rush lanes uh, and not let him escape. Is he one of the better quarterbacks then the Dukes will face at extending plays? I, I think he is. I think he's one of the better guys as far as uh, living off schedule. Uh, you know, we, we tend to uh, rush the passer well and can get guys that are pocket guys uh, pretty pretty well corralled. Uh, this guy will be a challenge for us. Defensively, what type of scheme do they employ? Yeah, they're going to be, you know, basically a 4-3 scheme. Uh, they're going to, they're gonna, you know, outnumber you in the run game, but uh, uh, they do a good job of covering the pass. And, and they're physical up front. Going into a game like this, you've talked about being myopic, just focus. Yeah. Uh, certainly you have a chance now to win a national championship in the postseason. Mm -hmm. Still that myopic fo focus with still looking and seeing behind you where you can still make improvements? Yeah, I'll, I'll, you know, again, our, our focus will be uh, right really right in front of us and really in the mirror, to be honest with you, uh, looking at what we can do to get better each week. And, and I think that's the only approach you can have is how can I improve each week? And if you're improving each week on on something, then you have a chance to, to, to be successful. And that's what we want to do is just keep improving each week and let this program go in the direction that uh, we feel like it can go. It certainly should be a great evening at Bridgeport Stadium again. And kickoff is at 4 o'clock. We're also encouraging fans to wear black. We want to have a blackout no uh, on, on uh, Saturday. First uh, 200, excuse me, first 2,500 students will receive black t-shirts. You can go online to jmusports.com 24-7 to purchase your tickets. Fans of JMU, make sure you're going to do that because we know the Liberty fans are certainly going to do it. Yeah. But the Dukes just don't want to fan the Flames. They want to kind of go ahead and beat them on Saturday. So, Coach, uh, best of luck. Thank you. Facing the Flames on Saturday. Again, kickoff is at 4. For Head Coach Everett Withers, I'm Kurt Dudley. Thank you for joining us this week in the postseason Coach Everett Withers Show.